Stephen Mosley. Uh, can I thank the, my honourable friend, the member for Romford, for giving me the opportunity to stand up here and speak on behalf of the, the 7,000 animals from 500 spe 400 different species who live in my constituency in Chester Zoo. Chester Zoo is Britain's most popular zoo, uh, generating 1.4 million visits a year, and it is regularly rated as one of the top 15 zoos in the world. Since its establishment in 1934, Chester Zoo and the North of England Zoo Zoological Society have always been a charity, have always been a members' organisation, and always had that social enterprise ethos that has meant for over 75 years Chester Zoo has been a big society success story. Yeah, yeah. Today, Chester Zoo generates some £13.5 million in visitor revenues and employs some 300 core staff on a year-round basis and another 160 seasonal staff during the summer. And it is a high-quality employer that brings good, long-lasting jobs into our local economy. Like many of the zoos uh, we heard about Twycosu earlier, it is a leader in conservation, both at home and abroad. In the UK, it is uh, responsible for breeding and reintroducing many native species back into the environment, including sand lizards, dormice, and harvest mice. But it is also a centre of international excellence for breeding programmes with other zoos to ensure that there is an insurance policy and that many endangered, endangered species have got a large enough uh, 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 population that they're able to uh, ensure genetic... Uh, stability across the, across the population. In fact, in the next year, uh, within the next couple of weeks, we're looking forward to the opening of a £250,000 giant otter breeding centre, which will include underwater viewing areas, it will include tunnels to allow you to pop up amongst the, the giant otters and to uh, breed giant otters, which are endangered species from South America. Chester Zoo is involved in over 150 different field projects in 50 different countries around the world. And it directly uh, runs 10 major field pro programs across the world, including uh, involving elephants, black rhinos, jaguars, the realm of the red ape, and a Nigeria project. It also funds, through the North of England Zoological Society Conservation and Research Grants, uh, over 60 field projects around the world, including cheetahs, Komodo dragons, and, uh, and, and other such animals. Like many zoos across the world, a lot of the international work that Chester Zoo does are based in the Far East, in South Asia, and in South America, which are some of the fastest growing economies in the world. We have got these brands, these zoos are doing good work in these countries, and we should be using their good name, we should be using their facilities to make sure that we sell Britain, that we sell British companies into these fast growing countries to enable and support our economic growth. We've already heard about the research and the educational uh, uh, facilities that zoos offer, and Chester does all of those things as well. But I want to move on, on to what Chester wants to do in the future, because it has got huge ambitions. For the past two years, Chester Zoo has been drawing up a £225 million natural vision project, which is a project which is, over 12 years, hopes to transform, zoo, tra transform Chester Zoo into the one, one of the world's largest and greatest animal and visitor experiences. The idea of the, of the Natural Vision Project is to develop a series of theme zones and to expand by one-third the size of the zoo to make it one of the largest in Europe. As part of this proposal, they're planning to safeguard some 500 jobs and create 660 new jobs, both in the zoo and in the local economy. The whole total project is some £225 million, with the first phase being some £90 million worth of projects. Planning approval has been granted and was granted in November last year to the zoo. However, they have uh, got uh, some slight difficulties because they had been promised £40 million from the North West Development Agency. And, of course, that money is, is no longer available. And they are now looking around trying to find alternative sources and trying to rearrange their plans to make sure that they can deliver as much as possible through their own resources. And they are being very successful in that. 
out of their own resources over the next couple of years, they're hoping to open an, an islands exhibit which will focus on Madagascar, Mauritius, Sumatra and other Southeast Asian islands. And it will feature an Indi Indi Indonesian show house, it will feature boat rides and underwater viewing of, of animals and it will house Sumatran orangutans, tigers, Komodo dragons, uh, fruit bats and crocodiles. As part of the proposal, they're also looking at creating a 150-bed themed hotel, which will be built directly into one of the themed zones. The idea of the zoo uh, in developing the natural vision is to make sure that people, when they come to visit the zoo, it's not just a one-day experience. They come, they come and spend the night in Chester, they spend a the night, they go to restaurants, they actually spend money in the local economy. Because one of the things we do notice with the zoo is we attract a huge number of visitors, but many of them are day visitors. They catch a train or they drive to Chester, they visit the zoo, and then they drive home again. And what we want to try and do is to make sure that people come and they stay the night. They spend several days in Chester, so they can spend several days at the zoo, but they can also go and see the other attractions that Chester has got to offer. And not just Chester, the wider sub-region, whether it's going up to Liverpool or whether it's going into North Wales. Chester Zoo sees itself as a real engine for growth locally, and with its large, high-profile uh, projects it's got planned in the future, it can really, really deliver those economic benefits. As I've said, the North of England Zoological Society, Chester Zoo, has got huge ambitions, and that is down to the work of Mark Pilgrim and Barbara Smith, the Director General and the MD of the zoo. Uh, and uh, it just remains for me to to ask the Minister that if he is interested in seeing the good work that zoos do in the local economy, if he is interested in seeing good work that is planned for the future, Chester Zoo and Chester would be more than welcome to welcome him.